To start, spiritual gifts can be things like wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, prophecy, and the skill to see the true nature of spirits. These are special abilities given to us by the Holy Spirit. How do you receive these gifts? Simply put, you must ask God for them through sincere prayer. What occurs when God decides it's time to unveil your spiritual gift? Often, He will separate you from others. This separation might make you feel isolated, but it's really part of the preparation process. During this phase, although it might feel like you're alone, it's a necessary step for you to fully discover your spiritual capabilities. Before you're completely ready to accept your spiritual mission, God might clear away distractions from your path. This often involves distancing yourself from individuals who are not destined to be part of your spiritual journey. This isn't a reflection of their character, but a recognition that not everyone is meant to walk the path that God has set for you. Coming to terms with this separation can be difficult. Often, people hold on to familiar things or relationships, even when they're detrimental, because they fear change. Yet, embracing your spiritual gift involves acknowledging a higher calling from God, which requires placing your trust in Him above all else. Remember, God's plan for you is better than any plan you could make yourself. I've learned from my own experiences that choosing my plans over God's usually led to wasted time or even problems. Keep this in mind, especially as God sets you apart for a while. This isolation isn't permanent, but allows you to seek wisdom and prepare for what's next, as suggested in Proverbs 18. One which talks about someone who separates themselves to seek wisdom. This time apart is just for a season to help you grow. When you're in a period of isolation, you find yourself learning more about God. You might be praying more often, delving deeper into the scriptures and perhaps even fasting. This is a time when you're strengthening your spirit and seeking God's kingdom and righteousness. During these moments, you'll start to realize that God has a unique purpose for your life. Remember, spiritual gifts aren't for showing off or feeling superior to others. They are meant to uplift and build up the Christian community, helping both believers and non-believers alike. Everyone needs to hear God's message, as we were all non-believers once. Moving on, you might feel a strong pull towards spiritual gifts. As mentioned in 1 Corinthians 14, 1. You are encouraged to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts especially prophecy. The Bible emphasizes the importance of seeking wisdom more than riches. Along with wisdom, you might feel a draw towards gaining knowledge, faith, and the ability to prophesy. When this desire stirs within you and you start integrating it with your faith and actions, you're showing God your readiness. You acknowledge that there are things you need to relinquish and obstacles you must overcome. Despite our imperfections and falling short of God's glory, your active pursuit shows your commitment to God's calling. We aren't bound by our sins. Instead, we surrender to God, not to our faults. We kneel only before God's throne. And if we find ourselves battling sin, we fight it determinedly. We are God's warriors, not ones to make excuses or give up easily. We are God's strong messengers, aware of our spiritual callings, and we strive to fulfill them to the best of our abilities. When you begin to recognize and use your spiritual gifts, be prepared for challenges. The devil might try to disrupt your path, but it doesn't matter because we are equipped and ready. With God's armor, we stand prepared against any force aiming to bring us down. You felt a pull towards prophecy and spiritual gifts, a desire placed in your heart. Furthermore, God often uses other people as messengers to guide us. Often, other people will notice your spiritual gifts and the unique calling on your life before you become conscious of them yourself. 
They can discern the blessings that are intended for you even before you start to recognize them, irrespective of their own spiritual status. There was a memorable day when someone placed their hand on you, and through that simple gesture, God sowed a profound seed within your mind. This seed, deeply embedded within your thoughts, made you ponder. What could this individual have seen in you that you hadn't yet recognized in yourself? This moment came well before you embarked on the path you walk today, before your baptism, before you started attending church regularly, before you began to follow the narrow path of righteousness, and even before you had a deep understanding of what sin truly meant. Back in those days, your familiarity with the Bible was quite limited. You knew very little, with perhaps only a vague awareness of God and some recollections from the book of Proverbs. Over time, you frequently found yourself contemplating the significance of that day's events and the words spoken to you. It was a seminal moment that has significantly shaped who you have become. All praises are due to the Most High for this manifestation of your spiritual gift. Your dedication to serving God and advancing His kingdom is evident. We are reminded by Scripture that faith without works is dead. This teaches us that genuine faith manifests in action, working diligently, making sacrifices, enduring hardships, and setting aside personal desires to fulfill a grander divine purpose. When God observes such readiness and commitment in you, He acknowledges that you are prepared to embrace your calling fully. Receiving your spiritual gift is by no means an instantaneous revelation. You do not wake up one day to find yourself impacting millions immediately. Rather, it is akin to the slow, deliberate growth of a plant from a seed. Just as a seed planted in the earth doesn't sprout into a cherry tree overnight, the development and realization of your spiritual gifts unfold over time. It requires patience, enduring through the various seasons of life, weeks and months, gradually growing and strengthening until it reaches its full potential. This process of spiritual maturation is slow and steady, reflecting the natural progression of growth that all living things must undergo. Take a moment to embrace patience, a crucial element often underscored in spiritual teachings. Consider the virtues that the Spirit nurtures within us, such as endurance and forbearance. If your heart is truly committed to serving God and you are actively pursuing this path, it's important to maintain that enthusiasm and not merely pay lip service to your intentions. It's essential to recognize that living a life of faith is not passive, but requires deliberate and consistent effort. Being a part of God's mission involves dedication and active participation. The scriptures encourage us daily to seek after God's kingdom and His righteousness, assuring us that by doing so, all other aspects of our lives will align and flourish. This guidance is particularly reassuring during challenging times, offering a beacon of hope and a solution to many of life's difficulties. This dedication to God's work is a profound testament to your love for Him. If you are still at the beginning stages of your spiritual journey, but possess a strong desire to dedicate yourself fully, this is a sign that you're prepared to leave worldly pursuits behind and focus on spiritual growth. The Bible reinforces this by reminding us that God is intimately aware of the contents of our hearts. An important aspect, which perhaps could have been mentioned first, is the recognition of signs from your early years or even before your conscious spiritual journey began. For example, the scripture from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, tells us, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, which profoundly indicates that God has always been aware of and had a specific plan for your life. This insight from Jeremiah can be incredibly affirming as it confirms that even before your birth, your life had purpose and direction defined 
by God's will. This knowledge should not only comfort you, but also inspire you to uncover and live out the divine plan laid out for you. Even before your birth, you were already destined to be a prophet to nations, chosen while still in the womb. Many viewers may not fully comprehend their potential as prophets or spiritual leaders yet. It's essential for you to forge a deep connection with your spiritual calling and the Holy Spirit. I can feel the energy from some of you watching, indicating that like me, you may have had similar experiences. As a child, perhaps you saw things others could not see, like demonic spirits. Even at a young age, when you tried to share these visions with your parents or someone close, they might not have understood, possibly thinking there was something amiss. Reflecting on these experiences now, you can understand what you were encountering. You were exposed to the spiritual realm, an insight that was both a gift and a challenge. This gift was given to you early in life, and while at times it was daunting, so much so that it brought you to tears because you were overwhelmed by what you saw, it was all part of a greater divine plan. These early encounters were not random. They were part of God's way of preparing you for the path ahead. They fortified you, equipping you for the responsibilities you would face later. Now, the fears and uncertainties that once plagued you no longer hold power over you. You confronted these challenges head on as a child. During your youth, you experienced many events that, while they might have been scary or bewildering at the time, were shaping you into the person you are meant to become. From a young age, certain signs might have been evident, indicators of your spiritual gifts that manifested before you fully embraced your faith. These signs often show up early, as many are called, but few are chosen. I've previously mentioned how crucial patience is. Waiting for God's timing is vital. The Bible enlightens us that those who wait on God will rise high, like eagles soaring in the sky, a promise found in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. These insights are part of the five signs that help you recognize your spiritual gifts, outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and sharing it across your social media platforms. Thank you all immensely for your time and support. Take care and peace out.